It's about that time of day again. My name is Joseph. It's Tuesday evening, June 27th. Welcome back to your nightly newsletter. We're covering crude oil, S&P, gold, euro, and FDAX tonight. Crude is bearish with a strong spike lower, which tells us to look for one of four scenarios as we head into tomorrow's inventory report. S&P is bearish with a wedge, which we'll definitely be using to find some selling opportunities inside the battle zone with a measured move target tomorrow. Gold is bearish and trying to finish the move back into yesterday's range. But we have a short-term bull flag telling us exactly where to look for traps and failures tomorrow. Euro is bullish with a spike in channel tonight, telling us to look for traps and seller failures back below that moving average for a triple up target tomorrow. DAX is bearish and trying to finish off a measured move target tomorrow. And the average, the moving average, tells us exactly where we'll be looking for the best trading opportunities. Boy, these markets are on fire right now, setting up for some big moves going into the end of the month of June. We're breaking free of all those ranges we were stuck in last week, and I'm excited for another big, big day of opportunities in Wednesday's session. I got a great newsletter in store for you guys and gals tonight. Tons of trading opportunities setting up for Wednesday. Before we jump into the charts, though, I want to remind you the only place to watch the full length version of this video is on our blog here at sidewaysmarkets.com. If you're watching the video right now on our YouTube channel, not to worry, there's a link in the description of that YouTube video. Follow that link and come join me here on the blog at Sideways Markets for the full-length version and all five analysis. Don't forget while you're here, join the mailing list. I'll send you an email every evening. You'll never miss another nightly newsletter ever again. And don't forget to follow me on social. Stock Twits. I got Twitter, Facebook, and LinkedIn. Right? Pick your favorite flavor. I'm always posting important charts, links, and updates throughout the day and throughout the week on my social media channels. Grab those charts tonight. How easy is that? Follow that link below the video tonight and download the charts in tonight's video and have them ready on your computer for tomorrow. Please don't forget to grab your free pass. You'll learn more with me in 90 minutes on that free pass than you will anywhere else on the interwebs. I can guarantee you that. And remember... I'm always here to answer your questions. If you got any questions, hit me up on live support, right? Always on the right hand side of our blog and on our website. Hope you guys have a great week here so far. Been a great month of June. We got the we got the holiday weekend coming right around the corner. Let's get ready for tomorrow. Tomorrow's Wednesday, June the 28th. And of course, as we go into a Wednesday session, I always remind you, yep, tomorrow's inventory day. That means, of course, we're getting ready for inventories tomorrow at 10:30 a.m. Eastern time. This will affect crude oil mostly, but don't forget the S&P loves to move in sympathy to the reaction tomorrow morning at 10.30. So don't be surprised if you see the S&P moving around tomorrow morning after 10.30 Eastern time as well. A couple things you want to be aware of on Wednesdays if you're trading crude. One, it's early in, early out. So 10.15 is my cutoff ahead of that news event tomorrow morning. Then give it at least 5, 10, maybe 15 minutes after the news comes out before you start looking for additional trading opportunities. I always have a hard cut at 10.15 ahead of the, uh, the inventory report from trading crude. And then I always wait and see how that news reaction goes. Sometimes it's is five minutes sometimes it's 10 or 15 minutes until the volatility calms down enough to be reliable so early in early out trade around that news tomorrow cut off is at 10 15 and the second thing i want to remind you about the inventory report tomorrow is that we have levels that we're going to use i published those on the blog they'll be on the video tonight on the chart here in a moment. If you want to see all of the inventory support and resistance levels that we'll be using tomorrow in our trade room, just simply scroll down on Sideways Markets blog, scroll down below the video. There's a link that says click here to download more or click here to read more, right? And that'll give you all the link, right? Or all the information for the support and resistance levels we'll be using for tomorrow's session in combination with the inventory report. Those will only be good for tomorrow. Again, scroll below this video tonight on the blog at Sideways Markets. And of course, you'll see a link that says click here to read more, follow that link, and that will open up right more information for you guys in the context there. And you can copy and paste that onto your chart for tomorrow. So early in, early out, and don't forget to grab those support and resistance levels tomorrow right ahead of the inventory report at 10.30 a.m. Other than that, other than that, that's all we pretty much have here outside of the 
uh, the international trade in goods tomorrow. International trade tomorrow morning be at 8.30 a.m. Eastern time. That's pretty much the big news tomorrow morning. we get got CPI tomorrow, right, from our good friends in Italy. Sorry, I almost missed that one. So CPI, of course, in London, right? we got international trade at 8.30 here in the U.S. And again, we have the petroleum status report, the inventory report, tomorrow at 10.30 a.m. Eastern time. So 5 a.m., 8.30. And then, of course, don't forget all hell breaks loose, right, once we get that number tomorrow morning at 10.30 a.m. for all the crude oil traders. Also, one more thing. Tomorrow is Wednesday. As we start going into Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, we do expect to start seeing a little bit of the end of the month kind of jitters start to show up. As you've already noticed, we're already seeing more volatility. The volume looks pretty good, but usually towards the last few days of the month, and I am anticipating this weekend to be, of course, the holiday weekend because the 4th of July is on Tuesday next week. I am anticipating uh, maybe not tomorrow but Thursday Friday we may start seeing that volume drop in addition to the volatility increasing so we're definitely setting up to be a bit of a cocktail of some challenging price action over the next couple days I don't expect too much tomorrow but definitely keeping an eye on Thursday and Friday just in case right you're curious about how the rest of the week looks as we go into this again it's not really a holiday weekend but it's the weekend before a Tuesday 4th of July holiday which I would imagine most people will be taking off early for so watching volume closely as we go to the last few days of this month and again tomorrow right be aware of the inventory report right regarding crude oil let's get going here how about some charts here tonight look at that crude dropping off the high crude is bearish we'll go crude S&P gold euro and wrap up with the FDAX tonight a lot of markets broke out of their ranges. Crude is one of them. Crude is bearish after this afternoon's API report. Sent prices collapsing off the highs with what we expect to be a spike in channel or some variation of that tomorrow. The goal for sellers is to look for a two-legged correction or buyer failures just above the moving average for a target going back down to the low while watching for a spike to develop into a spike in channel, spike in wedge, spike in range, or a possible flag tomorrow. As you can see, the buyers had a field day today. Buyers had a really good day today. We had a really good day today in our trade room with these buyers, right? Of course, buyers having a field day today all the way up to that prior month low. We talked about this, of course, as we get closer to the end of the month, those prior month levels start to become price magnets. They got that prior month low. They got the measured move accomplished. They pulled back. They couldn't quite get it in time before the API number came out this afternoon at 4.30 p.m. Eastern time, right? Doesn't really matter now. This All this stuff beforehand is, is pretty much useless at that point because all eyes and ears now are following this market lower with that spike now remember there are ultimately four different scenarios we look for when we see a big spike on the chart the first scenario is going to be up to a new lower low into a spike and channel if we see a spike in channel our number one priority is to find swings and sell high second scenario would be a spike and wedge up and down to a new low but instead of seeing a spike in channel we end up seeing a lower series of highs right and that creates a wedge a spike in wedge tells us the same thing look for those prior swings get this price up so we can sell it back down third scenario would be a strong spike down a move up and then unable to get through the low remember a spike in channel would go through that low and create the channel going lower right this of course the third scenario now goes up comes back down but can't go to a new lower low and it bounces back up that creates what we call a spike and range the key to a spike and range is to sell above the high of that range right sell it back down sell it back down and then of course right and then of course you have what we saw really today on crude oil on a short-term chart spike up right and a flag so this case spike down now follow the bouncing ball uh, closely on this one because most of these spikes will go up and at the very least they'll retest the low or they'll go through that low to create the spike in channel the spike in wedge 
right, the spike in range, whatever the case may be. In a flag pattern, though, price goes up and can't retest that low before bouncing higher. That creates the rising support trend line, and that creates the channel. The goal of a spike in channel is to trade off of the high, selling high, selling high, or strong breakdown, and then selling right the correction back down again right strong breakdown and then selling it back down again so really there are four scenarios we're watching right now on crude oil we definitely expect to see price go up and try to retest that low depending on what it does when it retests that low that will determine right which of these four scenarios we're looking for tomorrow i would also be i also want to make sure we point out that tomorrow is inventory day and you know we've seen this many times before right get a strong bull market and all of a sudden the bears take it right all day tomorrow or all morning tomorrow until 10 30 a.m and then price jumps back up so be very much aware that on inventory days we oftentimes see a bear market turn completely bullish or a bull market turn completely bearish. So we really have to be on our toes tomorrow. We'll see how it looks as we go into our trade room session tomorrow morning at 8 o'clock Eastern time. But really right now what you're looking for is, is looking up at these prior levels of resistance. We might not get all the way back to 44 here for that battle zone. We get a, a reversal line there at 44. We got falling resistance coming down around 44. Heck, we even have an old trend line coming up at the bottom right around that 44 area. So all those areas up top there, they all make for great levels of resistance. We may not get that far. That moving average may come down, and we may, of course, see that moving average be all that we need here. Some of the things we're going to think about tomorrow will be a failure right up above the moving average failure whenever we see a real strong move like this we expect sellers to be waiting at the moving average to sell back down so buyer failure above the moving average that will be an easy one another opportunity here would be what we call a two-legged correction if we grind up use that trend line and back down from there you know again the bottom line is anytime we see a strong move down the odds are very high that we're gonna see price go up and then at least retest that low if it goes through that low then we start looking at this as a spike in channel spike in wedge right it won't be a spike in range or a flag pattern tomorrow so really right now it all depends on right do we go up and fail to get that new low if that's the case it becomes a flag and we try to sell off the high down up down into a spike in channel sell off the high there or of course spike down up new lower low right looks like a spike in channel at first but again not quite getting full rotation and we start trading this now as a spike and right a spike and wedge so really right now just waiting to see this price go up so we can failure back down or up so we can two-legged correction back down or right could be as simple as a straight pullback normally these moves are not going to give you just a straight pullback right a pullback to the moving average that's not normally going to be what works the best in this scenario but we'll wait and see what we get here for tomorrow how does the market turn bullish tomorrow remember tomorrow's inventory day so we might come in tomorrow and this market may have already regrouped and be running here right? that's it's very much a reality that inventory day is always very much right kind of a coin toss as far as overall direction goes because a lot going on right ahead of that news number at 10 30 tomorrow how does this market turn bullish a lot of strength first of all we need to see about as much strength going higher as we see going lower so real strong move back up literally take that all back and then hold this pullback right to new highs I worry about this prior month low, so be careful buying up into that 38, 31 area, but that's exactly what you're looking for, right, for these buyers to take control. Do not try to pick a bottom on this market right now. That is way too much strength downside to want to buy this, right? It's very likely here right now that we go up and run right back down to stop out anyone who tries to fade this market. And again, we're looking for that price to go up, failure, right, and back down, up, two-legged move, and back down, trying to use some of these levels of resistance. And then tomorrow, we'll keep an eye on spike in channel, spike in wedge, right, spike in range, or of course, that flag pattern. And again, tomorrow, cut off 10, 15 before that news comes out, or wait until after the news, right, give it 5, 10, maybe 15 minutes after the news comes out, right, and then go at it from there. Don't forget, we'll be in the trade room tomorrow morning, 8 o'clock Eastern time, and we're going to execute this strategy together with 
all of our clients. Let's keep going here about some S&P. S&P's bearish with a wedge as it tries to finish off a measured move target and retest the prior month high, which is a magnet as we go into the end of the month of June. The wedge and the measured move both act as our targets for tomorrow, and we're getting very close to these targets, so we need to be aware trying to chase these moves lower. The plan for tomorrow, the plan for Wednesday is to be aware you get the inventory report tomorrow at 1030. Again, not not in, not S&P related, but you may see some kind of sympathy movement on the S&P after that news comes out tomorrow. The plan is to look for selling opportunities up above those prior swings in the battle zone. Don't forget the month end comes right around the corner here at the end of this week. We'll start seeing signs of that end of the day tomorrow, Thursday and Friday, right? And again, right, keep an eye on the volume here as we go into the end of the month. Guys, we've covered a lot of great useful information here tonight. I want to encourage you to share this video with a trading buddy of yours or two or three, right? Don't, don't hog all the good information for yourself. While you're here, if you want to learn more about everything we trade here at School of Trade, I will encourage you to join the free trial. You'll learn more about what we do here in our trade room and our nightly newsletter as part of that free trial. And don't don't forget to check out our beginner, intermediate, and advanced levels of membership. We have a place for everyone, whether you're brand new to trading or you're a grizzled veteran and you haven't quite been able to put the pieces together yet to find consistent profitability on your trading. I've got a great strategy that we trade every day in our trade room and I look forward to seeing you there with me. Don't forget, I'm always here to help things out. Live support on the right-hand side of the website. Hit me up if you have any questions. And we'll see you guys tomorrow morning at 8 o'clock Eastern time in the trade room with advanced members. If not, I'll see you same time, same place for tomorrow. Be well out there tomorrow. Be nice to each other, will you? Right? Follow the plan. Right? Plan those trades and trade the plan. And I'll see you guys next time. Adios, amigos.